Welcome everyone to St. Peter's for this joint service with Christ Church Quaker Farms for the third Sunday of Easter. We are Episcopalians together in Oxford. And so in the Easter season, we begin our service. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now I invite you to join in singing hymn number 199, Come ye faithful, raise the strain. from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 36b to 48. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. And they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, Have you anything for me to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. 
when he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the book of the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in the name, in his name, to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May these words be spoken and heard in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So, for the last nine years, I've been looking at the words that are painted behind the altar here, but I never paid much attention to them until recently. Then the words on the right side of the altar jumped right out at me. In this place, I will grant peace. This is a quotation from the Old Testament prophet Haggai, who was active around 520 BC. The Israelites, having been conquered and enslaved by the Babylonians a generation earlier, had just returned to their homeland. The great temple in Jerusalem, the center of Israel's life and worship, had been totally destroyed, leveled to the ground. And while the Israelites were glad to be back home, they were devastated by the destruction and discouraged about the prospect of ever being able to rebuild the temple. Enter Haggai, who urges the people to get moving. He says that the glory of the temple they will build will be greater than the glory of the old temple. And he promises that in this place, God will grant peace. Peace, I think, is an interesting concept. First of all, it means, of course, lack of conflict. Conflict, But its deeper meaning is much greater than that. Peace means tranquility, a sense of calmness, of quietness, of serenity. It means being so focused in the moment you're in that your mind stops jumping around. It means a feeling of harmony and a sense of being exactly where you are supposed to be at that moment. Peace is a great gift indeed. And God promises to give us peace in this place. Fact is, we all need peace in our lives. We need peace with God, accepting his will for us instead of fighting against him. We need peace with ourselves, accepting ourselves as we are, warts and all, while yet striving to be the best we can be. We need peace with others in our lives, perhaps most especially with those we are closest to. And God knows that we need peace in our world, in our country, and in our communities. God promises you and me that we can find peace right here, even at little old St. Peter's, because we are in his presence. Sometimes, Peace just surprises us, and that's wonderful. But more often, we need to make an effort 
to quiet our minds, to reject distracting thoughts, and to focus on being in the presence of God in order to experience his peace. To be honest, our worship service doesn't offer a lot of help in experiencing peace. We Episcopalians are a very busy bunch. We're standing, we're sitting, we're kneeling, we're singing and reading and praying and listening. We're asked to pay attention to the Bible readings, to the sermon, to the prayers and to the hymns. But there is precious little opportunity in our liturgy to be quiet, to try to still our distracted minds and to focus on the moment. And now that we have been able, unable to come to church for over a year, my guess is that peace is in shorter supply than ever. And so I thought it might be helpful to try a little peace experiment today and see if we can all get a little taste of the gift of peace that God wants to give us. Being quiet is a learned skill. It comes easier for some people than it does for others, but everyone can get better at being quiet. So how about we give it a try? It's really pretty simple. No fancy chanting or yoga poses or required. You can do it wherever you are. I would simply invite you to do two simple things. First, to close your eyes, to shut out distractions around you, and then simply to breathe deeply to help you shut out your inner distractions. So I would like to invite you to try doing just that for a few moments, to close our eyes and to breathe deeply. And if you pay attention to your breathing, you will, I can promise, feel yourself start to slow down, to feel more deeply present in this moment. And so let's try this just for a couple of minutes. Let's try to keep breathing deeply, keeping our eyes shut, and letting God be present to us. Amen. Now let us offer up our prayers to our Lord Jesus Christ for ourselves, for others, and for the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. 
Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. Remembering St. Peter's Church and Christ Church Quaker Farms, we pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion upon those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from, from their, their distress. distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your, your heavenly, heavenly kingdom. kingdom. Let us now pray for our own needs and those of others. Father of all mercies, I lift up to your throne of grace those in the St. Peter's family in need of your healing, Jim, Bill, Shirley. Lord, we pray for those at Christ Church in need of your healing. Jerry, Patrick, Ashley, Bob Knapp's future in-laws. We pray for their healing of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of the church, and give to us that peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now it's time for us to share the peace the peace that comes from God, the peace that he has planted in your hearts and that you can share with us if you're all alone just by making the peace sign or you can share with others. But know that that peace is real and that you can take it with you as you share. So may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We are now at the point in our service when we present our offerings to the Lord for him to use for his purposes in both of our churches. As always, we are grateful to all of you from both St. Peter's and Christ Church who have been so faithful in your financial giving through this last long year, which I think is a desert year of not being able to come together in church. It is because of you that we are able to continue the ministries of our churches. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Our service concludes now with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray, saying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good deed to do his will, 
working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and upon all those you love and remain with you always Amen. Amen. and now I invite you to join in singing hymn number 174 at the Lamb's High Feast time for the dismissal. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.